The Genki Wave is an incredible device for making music through capturing the movement of your hands. We're really proud to now support the Genki Wave directly inside of Glover. And in this video, I'm going to go through how to get started with the Genki Wave in Glover so you can begin using these two great tools together. So when you first open up Glover, you'll be presented with something that looks a bit like this. So you've got an empty project and this is where you can begin to add your Genki Wave device. Now, before we add anything, you have to make sure that your Genki Wave has firmware version 1.7.5 or later. So if you don't have that, go to the, the Genki Softwave software and update your device to that version. So to add your Genki Wave device, what we're going to do, we're going to go up here and where it says devices, we're going to hit this plus button. And there's a bunch of different uh, options here and we're going to choose the Genki Wave. So inside of here, you've got this is sort of the summary version of your device. There's a few things you can do here. So you can rename your device. So for, so you could call it Genki Left if this was your left one or Genki Right. Um, I'm just going to keep mine called Genki Wave because I'm only going to add one in this project because you can add two. Right, so you can add a second one um, for your left and right hand. But in, in this example, we're just going to have one and I'm just going to keep it called Genki Wave. I can mute my, my, I can mute my device. Uh, this is the battery reading. And then here is uh, this red button is where I can connect. So um, what happens is if I click on this button, I'll get this um, dialog which presents to me the list of available devices. Now, um, if I now go onto my device and I press the button, uh, you can see now it's sort of woken it up and it's detected it. This is working via Bluetooth, so I think you have to have your Bluetooth on. Um, so you can select the device and you hit connect. And then now you can see that we've got signal coming in and we've got a battery reading. So if you hover over, you can see the battery reading down in, in this info area. So that tells us that we've, we've got 100% battery, which is good news. So um, what we can then do when we click on our device, we get presented with what's called the inspector window. So in the inspector, we've got um, lots of different things we can do. First thing to draw your attention to is the hand. So I've got mine on my right hand, but you can choose to have it on your left hand instead. And that will change the way that the uh, calculations work to uh, make everything work as expected. So I'm gonna keep it here on my, on my right hand. So this here is the, the orientation panel. So in the orientation panel, you can uh, basically see what's happening. So we've got the roll of our wrist here in this area. We've got uh, pitch, so that's this angle moving up and down. And then we've got yaw, which is sort of this, this movement. Now, um, what we can do is we can also recenter this. So this, is a, this button is a sort of set forwards button. So if I decided I want forwards to be, let's say, over, over here, that would now be forwards and that everything would be relative to that. Um, I'm going to set forwards to be this way, um, but um, this is how we center it because the device doesn't know from the start exactly where forwards is. Um, we can do this programmatically and we're going to do that a bit later. So um, yeah, we'll come to that. This is the button area. There's three buttons, buttons A, B and C. Um, so I can then basically press them and you can see them popping up here in the panel. And then finally, we've got the tap area. So this is sort of giving us um, a sort of signal reading for the tap event. Um, there's one more thing here, which if you click this button, um, it gives you a sort of data stream uh, signal connectivity measure. So you can actually see if you've got some connectivity problems or maybe you're in a, a busy space and that might be something uh, you want to address. So to begin making your first mappings in Glover with the Genki Wave, what we need to do is to look at this device inputs area. So if I click on the Genki Wave here, um, there's several kind of input groups, I guess, to look at. So there's orientation, so there's pitch, roll, and yaw, which are these orientation ones that we just covered. There's buttons A, B, and C, but there's also, as well as the, the main button um, A, B, and C presses, there's also long presses for those buttons and extra long presses for those buttons. There's the tap event, which is sort of any time the, the, the sort of tap happens. And there's the tap signal, which is more of a continuous signal that can be used if you want to for, for uh, that's used around the detection of the, the tap event. We also have this uh, direction. So this, these are basically sort of um, uh, options that let you choose to, to limit or scope um, 
uh, certain certain things like button presses, depending on whether you're pointing up, down, left, right, forwards, or backwards. And um, these can also be used as events in their own right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to add an input in Glover. So that's the first thing we're going to do is like define what movements we want. So I'm going to press I, add in add an input. I've got an empty mapping input, and I'm going to go to the orientation here, and I'm going to choose roll. And if if you look here, you'll see now this sort of signal coming in and that's actually the roll of my hand as I move it to the left and right. So I've got this nice signal and I actually go in I can limit it I can say right the minimum is going to be here and then the maximum is going to be here. So now I've got a, a signal that's taking up the full range that I want it to. Um, and what I can do next is I can go up here and I can add an output. And the output is our way that, of communicating with the world outside of Glover. So this is could be by MIDI, it could be by OSC. Um, there's all kinds of different things we can do. So I'm, I'm going to just create a MIDI message here and that's going to create a MIDI control change message. You can change that to, to any MIDI type you want, but this is a MIDI control change message. It's on channel one and it's control change number 20. We do have, if, if MIDI is not something you're familiar with, we do have a introductory video for MIDI that will um, let you kind of get a feel for, for what you need to be looking at and I'll, I'll link that down in the description. So what you need to do next is you can then just drag and connect the input that we created to the output here and that way now all of these um, roll events that when, when I move my hands are now sending to this this particular MIDI message. So what I'm going to do next, I, I've got Ableton Live open here I have some voice and audio channels. These are for me to record this tutorial for you, so just ignore those. But I have here this this one drum loop. And what we're going to do is actually I'm going to I'm going to map to a parameter on an EQ for this drum loop. It's a very simple, uh, slightly cheesy effect, but it's going to show you very clearly how to make these kind of mappings. But before we do anything, we have to go first into live settings and you have to make sure that in the MIDI section here of the settings uh, for in, for Glover, remote is ticked to be on. So that will let you do MIDI mapping using Glover. If that setting's not ticked, you won't be able to do any MIDI mapping. So make sure you do that first. So what we're going to do next, we're just going to take a quick listen to this loop. So it's pretty simple. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this um, filter parameter and we're just going to pull this down and pull it up again. So what we want to do is to control this parameter. I'm going to sort of le not do it here in a graphical way, but what we actually want to do is control this, the frequency alone, right? Just this, this parameter here. But what we need to do is to actually get the Genki wave to be mapped to that parameter inside of Ableton Live so that we are controlling it. Now, remember, we already have this um, MIDI CC channel one, uh, controller number 20 connected to our role and we're already uh, sending that out. So all we need to do is we go in and then we can uh, select our parameter and then we can either hit the MIDI button or we can do Command M. So I'm going to hit the MIDI button. Uh, sometimes you have to select, select it again, so I'm going to select it a second time. Now because the, before I do it, because the, the signal from our controller is sending all the time, this will pick it up immediately. So as soon as I click on this, there you go. You see channel one, message number 20 has been picked up. And if I click the MIDI button again, we go back to normal. And now, if you have a look, you can see that when I move my hand, I'm controlling the cutoff frequency with my, with my Genki wave. So let's now try that with the loop. So pretty simple, really. There might be one other thing we want to do here, which is that if we go back to Glover, we're controlling this all the time, and that's not that's not great, right? Because we can't stop controlling the cutoff frequency, and maybe we want to kind of engage this and then disengage it. How would we do that? We go and click on our mapping roll, and I can go and take like let's say button B, which is the middle button, and I can just drag that into here, and that now you'll see the signal stops. So now if I move my hand, you'll see nothing actually happens, but when I press the button. Now it's controlling it again. So I can now engage and disengage this. 
I'm just going to do one other thing as well. So we have this reset on release option, which means that when I release the button, I want it to send a certain signal. Now, I want it to set the cutoff frequency all the way back to the top again. So that's going to be MIDI value 127. Again, if, if MIDI 127 and why we have that number doesn't make that much sense, um, I, I'll refer you again to the, to the MIDI video we made, which um, we'll link in the description. So let's now go back to uh, Ableton Live here. And I'm going to play the loop again, and you'll see that basically I can now move my hand and nothing happens. But now when I engage the button, it works. And if I let go of the button, it's going to flick back to the top. So that's like a nice way for us to just have a, a control that we can engage and disengage in a really simple way. So there's a couple of last things that we want to cover here. So I want to show you that if you create an output, um, you can create this thing called a device feedback option. And what that does is it actually lets us do a couple of things with the with the Genki Wave device. So the first thing we can do is we can set forward. So if we were on stage and we wanted to turn at 90 degrees, let's say to face a keyboard or something, away from the audience, we could actually change where forwards was uh, in the middle of our performance. So we could do that with, let's say, a, a, a long button press. You can also drag these directly to, to here. So let's say a button A, long press, would now set forwards, and that's a that's now an option for us to do with with the wave. So I'm not going to uh, do that now, but that's just just a simple thing you can do. Another thing you can do, if I create another device feedback mapping here, we can update the LEDs on the device. So uh, there's a bunch of options here. So I can take the number two, for example, or number eight, or three, or whatever it is. Or there's a, a heart, or a square. You know, there's lots of different things we can do. Or if you clear it you can draw things in. So I'm going to draw my own thing here. I don't know what that is. So um, there we go. That will do, I think. There you go, let's try and make it symmetrical. So I've got these sort of three lines. And then what happens is it doesn't happen when you do it, but it, you can trigger this. So it can be triggered by a button press, or it can be triggered by something called a scene switch. Um, there's a few different things. We're going to um, send you on actually to the, our, our, the rest of our kind of Glover tutorial videos, which are going to go into all of these uh, topics in more depth. But uh, for now, I'm going to trigger it with um, another button press. So maybe I'll trigger it with button C. So with button C, I'm now going to press that. And you can see now that the 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 um, pattern has appeared on the Genki Wave that I programmed in. So you, you, you can actually do all kinds of sort of fun feedback things if you want and, and kind of get that uh, kind of customized feedback onto the device yourself. So the very last thing I'm going to come to say is that if you connect it to a Genki Wave, Glover will remember which device you're connected to. So if you disconnect it by clicking this and try and connect again, this time it won't pop up the window uh, to tell you, uh, you know, which device do you want to connect to because it's going to try and find the one that you connect to before. So if I click it, it will just try and find the one that it connected to. And there we go, it's found it again. But if you disconnect and you control click, instead of just clicking, you just control click, you'll get the window back. So if you wanted to connect to a different device, then you can do that instead. So that's just a, a, a sort of neat thing on the, on, the, uh, on the device itself. So now I'm going to send you on to take a look at our other Glover tutorials, starting with our mapping tutorial, but also going on to some of the other tutorials on things like scene switches and instruments. And that's going to really help you get the most out of your Genki Wave. And um, I hope you've going to have a really good time with it. And uh, if you've got any questions, then please don't hesitate to just get in touch with the team. Thanks very much.